Welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Listen and learn what the wealthiest Americans are doing with their money and time that's different from the middle class. Learn the roadmap to financial and personal success that includes family, fitness, romance, charity, and all the parts of a balanced life. Now, here's your host, real estate investor and mentor, Steve Davis. Hello and welcome to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, where as always, we're here together working hard to improve our financial IQ, our financial literacy, and it's primarily because high school and college just do not teach you anything about building wealth. They teach you how to get a job, and that's about it, and very, very, very few people ever get wealthy just having a job. So today, I want to start the show off by answering a couple of emails. Um, The first question, well, actually, they're the same question now that I look at both of them. Apparently, there's a popular podcast of my show where I talk about COI, and I've been getting a lot of questions and requests for me to review that. So let's do that in this first segment. Please be sure to stay tuned because I have a guest that is unbelievable. His name is Jesse. He's a new sponsor syndicator at Total Wealth Academy who has done 15 full cycle deals, 15 full cycle deals. And his average rate of return is above 50% annually. Now let that sink in above 50 percent you're making seven percent in the stock market he's making his investors 50 percent so please stay tuned i want you to meet this person and we'll show you how you can get in touch with him and so on um but coi coi stands for cost of inaction it could also be called cop cost of procrastination cost of procrastination. Many of you have listened to my radio show for years and still not taken any action. And I don't mean to pick on you. It's just you've got to understand that that is costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential earnings. See, COI is deceptive because the average person thinks that if you procrastinate for two years, you only lose the money you would make in the first two years. And as with any business or investment, the first couple of years, you don't make that much money. If you look at one of our students, he made, you know, maybe 20000 his first year as a passive investor. He made like 40000 his second year. So not that much. But by the end of his 10th year, he was making around 200 grand a year. See, COI is misunderstood. Most people think, well, he just lost, if he procrastinates for two years, he loses the money that he would have made his first two years. So 20,000 the first year, 40,000 the second year, he just lost $60,000. But that's not accurate. You don't lose two years off the beginning. You lose two years off the end. See, this particular member procrastinated for three years before he got started. Three years. So if he's making two hundred grand a year now, do you realize he lost six hundred thousand dollars because he procrastinated for three years? He just listened to the radio show, kept saying he was going to take the free workshop, but never did. Kept saying he was going to become a passive investor, but never did. He lost $600,000, $200,000 a year for three years. $200,000 a year for three years of his earning ability just gone, kaput, out the window because of procrastinate. (coughs) Excuse me. They cleaned my office today, and whatever chemical they used is uh, really messing with me, so I apologize if I cough a few times. 
But the key to it is <laughs> it's so simple, it's just ridiculous. Get started now. See, so many people are waiting and they've got this theory that there's a right time to get started. When the kids are out of school, I'll get started. When the kids go back to school, I'll get started. When my job gives me a promotion, I'll get started. When this happens, when that happens. And they're waiting for this supposed perfect time when all the planets will align and then they'll take action. But I'm warning you, and this is a fact, it will never be the right time to get started investing. Never. It, it just never will be. You got to get that through your head. The time to start investing is now. I don't care where you're at, what financial position you're in. You start now. Because every year that you wait, every month that you wait, is costing you money. Just like we saw with Luis, he lost, I think he actually was making 250 grand a year, so I think he actually lost 750,000. But I was trying to be conservative. We'll just say he lost $600,000 of his lifelong earning ability by procrastinating for three years. Some of you have been listening to me for longer than that. What are you doing? I guarantee you're waiting for the right time. I'm sorry to tell you this, but it will never be the right time. The planets are not going to align for you. The ducks are not going to get in a row for you. It's just not going to happen. You got to start wherever you're at. There's a Chinese proverb. When is the best time to plant a tree? 20 years ago. When is the second best time to plant a tree? Today. Well, the same holds for investing. When is the best time to start investing? 20 years ago. You should have done this 20 years ago. When is the second best time? Today. You've got to get started. You've got to start building wealth. You know, every one of you listening to this, you've, you've worked 5, 10, 15, 20 years. You're not in the financial position that you want to be in. You never will unless you change what you're doing. See, life doesn't change and then you change. You change, then your life will change. But you've got to take action. You've got to do what you know you must do, which is begin investing and building a second stream of income which Warren Buffett's been telling you to do for got to be 50 years. So, okay, so there's COI, cost of inaction or cost of procrastination. And I threw in the part about, you know, it's never the right time. You got to have that lesson in your head as well. Never will be. We'll talk more after the break here on the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Thanks for listening. put money in the bank or pay your insurance premium, they take that money and go buy real estate with it. Why? Because it gives the highest rate of return and is the lowest risk. This is called passive investing. Due to some recent changes in the laws, you can now invest the exact same way. Total Wealth Academy can show you how. Visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend our free sample class on real estate investing. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, and I'm about to bring on my special guest, Jess, Jesse. Now, I want to make sure I get this name correct, Worcester. Um, 
he is the co-founder of Worcester Investments. They've been in business since 2006, and they have grown to acquire over 6,000 apartment units, with about 3,500 of them having gone full cycle. Now, you got to listen to this. When I was talking earlier, I actually pulled a punch, and I said, He's got a rate of return in, in excess of 50%. I pulled a punch there because it almost sounds too good to be true. But this guy's actual number, 58 plus percent. Let me say it again. 58 plus percent rate of return for his investors. Just insane numbers. And the cool thing about Jesse is he didn't start off with a lot of money. You know, his father was a pastor, his mother was a school teacher, but he and his brothers, Joel and Paul, started Worcester Investments with a goal of their philosophy is to underpromise and overdeliver on returns and always be well positioned positioned for opportunistic sales. And as a result, he's been able to produce a fifty eight plus percent rate of return. So, Jesse, thanks a lot for calling in. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Steve. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for calling in. Uh, tell everybody where you're actually at. So, we uh, grew up in Eugene, uh, Oregon, West Coast, um, but moved out to Kansas City to start our, our business. Uh, started our business in 2006 and basically by 2007 realized we were in the wrong part of the that we cash real so made the move with our young families uh, out to Kansas City and have been there ever since and is it you that has a rule you won't invest in stuff that's more than a couple hours away from you yeah so if 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 I can't drive it, originally it was just uh, Kansas City so our original theme was there's a great book good to great and it was be the best in the world at something and originally you know as you mentioned we didn't have our own money starting out, and so we were buying houses and duplexes. Uh, and so the original thesis was, you know, a couple block radius be the best in the world at buying houses or duplexes. And that radius just slowly expanded for a while. It was just Kansas City. Um, but we got to the point where we were, you know, growing too much. And so now it's just if I can drive there in a day, it, there and back in a day, my wife and I have five kids, so that's very important to me. Family super important. Um, and we just have a philosophy that we want to invest in our backyard. Um, so we want to be local. We, we manage all of our own properties. And so from a, you know, if there's a, an exciting new deal, I want to be able to drive there as soon as, you know, we hear about it. Or if there's a problem at a property, I want myself or anyone, my brother or anyone else uh, on our team to be able to go, you know, see it right away. I actually like that strategy and used it when I was in single family. I kept, I used my home as my main place of business. You know, I had an right. office and a home, but I kept every one of my single family properties within 30 minutes of my home. And it was amazing. One, it forced me to do, you know, having that goal ended up working and I never had more than a 30 minute drive, you know, to go solve a problem. Right. So I love what you're doing. That makes total sense to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's go over, you've done 6,000 apartment units. How many syndications is that? Do you know? Yeah, so it's probably, I think we're about 40. Um, high 30s or coming up on 40 uh, individual syndications. And I do want to clarify, you mentioned the, the 58% return. So we, we, that's only on, we've had 15 deals that have gone full cycle. And so, you know, there's always a big pop at the end. Right. Um, and we're long-term hold uh, buyers, so we we I look at kind of uh, you know portfolio-wide or company-wide average return, and we put a lot of emphasis on the pre-sale cash on cash. That's actually really what we're most obsessed about. But that 50, I just want to clarify that fifty-eight percent is on those fifteen deals that have gone full cycle. Understood. Well, yeah. what do you consider long-term? Yeah, so we underwrite everything to ten years. Um, okay. And, you know, a lot of folks out there are underwriting, you know, three to five years. And I understand because, you know, it makes that IRR look really good. 
Um, and if you can flip money that quickly and time the market really well, um, that's, to me, kind of the best-case scenario. And our philosophy is we would rather, as you mentioned, under-promise and over-deliver. We've sold properties. Our, actually, our average hold time is seven years. So we're on average selling you know, considerably earlier than what we forecast. But it's better, in my opinion, to forecast a longer hold and surprise people, hey, the market's in a great place. We're getting – and this is exactly what happened. We're getting offers coming in, even unsolicited, for, in our opinion, way more than what the, the property is worth. And that's the environment in which we want to sell. We don't want to be pigeonholed into a time period when maybe the market is depressed. For example, people that, that bought three years ago uh, today – you know, if they forecasted that, now is not uh, the best time to be selling um, with what's happened with interest rates. So when we bought three years ago, uh, you know, we got long-term debt, and and um, and so we're not in that position that a lot of folks have found themselves in today. So you're basically giving a 10-year realistic, hey, somewhere during this 10-year period, the market's going to be just right and we'll sell, but probably the max would be 10 years. But... You know, I've been in deals that almost went more than 10 years. I don't think I've ever been in one that went a full 10 years. But I remember thinking, based on the market, we were going to go past it. So you're giving the your investors a realistic expectation. Exactly. And and then on top of that, you know, real estate is, is fairly slow moving. And, you know, what I, what I like so much about real estate is there are these kind of catch-alls uh, which is buying right, uh, in my opinion, being patient on selling, so selling at the right time, and then being obsessive about solving the business plan one way or another. And, you know, every one of those 15 deals that we've had had ups and downs. Every one of them had surprises in some way, shape, or form. Um, and when you, when you allow yourself that, when you have that long-term hold strategy, you allow yourself the time to react to, to market conditions, to react to maybe even mistakes that we that you make internally um, and fix those and ultimately achieve that, you know, the highest NOI possible and the best result for investors long term. Love it. Yeah, it's it's true, you know, your point about it moving slowly. I like the this phrase, you may have heard it, where real estate is very forgiving. It's very forgiving. You can make a goof up here and there. But because it moves so slowly, you can recover from it and solve the problem and turn a deal around. Whereas other investments move so quickly that once something goes wrong, you know, it's a spiral, downhill spiral. So that's part of the reason I love real estate, too. Yeah, um, I completely agree. It's also hard for competition to come in. It's forgiving in that regard as well. I mean, most of what we're buying is some sort of value-add property and if someone wants to come in next door and, you know, build a new product to justify the cost of construction, their rents would have to be so much higher than ours. So it's got that uh, moat uh, of, of security where, you know, uh, people can't come in um, and it's a lot harder for people to come in uh, and, and compete. Yeah, let's talk about rents for a second now that you brought them up. When you underwrite a deal, a lot of people think that you go with the high as far as what the rents can be. But you actually go with the average, don't you? Well, we, we try to basically have the rent in what we're forecasting as low as we can justify. So, so yeah. again, it's kind of that under-promise, over-deliver mentality where, you know, CoStar or the surrounding market might be X, but if, if we can forecast below that and internally. So we put out um, what we call a base case, which is what we say, this is what we really expect to to exceed. Our goal is to exceed it. Um, but it's kind of that conservative model where we want everyone to be happy if we hit that. But we're leaving without sharing it with investors. Internally, the first budget we put out, and when we're talking with our management team, the expectations are way higher than that base case. Recently, what we've done is we've also shared an internal target number and model so people can see, hey, this is what we're projecting. But internally, what do we think is actually achievable? It, were, you know, it, it might be a bit of a stretch goal, but that's what we're going to shoot for and push for, including rents, including expenses. It's kind of all, all of the above. We kind of take that 
base case approach, but then shoot for the internal target. So yeah, in terms of rent, um, we we would we would ideally aim to forecast below the average with the goal of outperforming the average. Interesting. That yeah, like you said, that's another point where you're under promising. So in your area of the country, what are you paying per unit average? Um, and you can hit me with B, C, A, B, and C. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, what, what is it about average that you're paying? I'll tell you, we're paying, you know, 60, 50 to 65 for our C-class properties. And we're paying upwards of 150 to 200,000 for our A-class properties. What's, what's it look like out there? would say similar um you know the most one of our more recent acquisitions was a 2009 build uh for about 85 a door um Boy, and that, that, that nice. was that's actually a pretty beautiful property um so it, that's that's not representative of what i would say is the market so to, to give you an idea this year alone we've underwritten 200 over 250 deals only 10 met a, kind of an initial hurdle of ours, which is a, with, it, with our underwriting model, which is a pre-sale 7% or above cash on cash return for investors. So only 10 met that threshold, and that's with, within our own model. Gotcha. Uh, and half of those were so ugly that, and, and too much hair on them that we weren't even, you know, the risk didn't justify the return. The other half we pursued and we bought one, and then we have another one under contract. So we're, we're really kind of a needle in the haystack approach and and that's not uh, that's not historical over you know you can't buy 6500 plus units uh having that approach but the the way the market is our our standards have not changed and so the amount of deals that kind of fit through that uh filter um are just way less these days so we're buying you know one to three deals a year um then we have yeah i would say but on the in terms of the market as a whole, I would say Kansas City is, and our surrounding markets are similar to those ranges you shared. Okay. We got to go to break, Jesse. Please hold on, and we'll talk after the break here on the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Thanks for listening. The stock market was never designed to build wealth. It was designed to keep up with inflation. The average rate of return over the last 75 years is about 7%. You'll get that even with the ups and downs. If you want a higher rate of return and less volatility, consider real estate. We make about three times as much as the stock market. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That is TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Thank you. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, along with my special guest, Jesse Worcester of Worcester Investments. And what I'd like, Jesse, what I'd like to have you do during this segment, we've got about 10 minutes, so you've got to keep it brief. Great. But I would like to hear a case study, you know, where you, where you can, you know, and they don't have to be perfect numbers. You can round them off. How much do you pay for the property? How much did you have to raise in capital? Uh, what went wrong with the deal? What went right with the deal? Just kind of a case study of one of your full cycle deals. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, one that comes to mind um, where we experienced this is this is I'll kind of never forget the details of this deal because it was the first one where we had to do a capital call, which was. Um, you know, up to that point, it was kind of a calling card or just a, something we really, um, you know, loved is just having that we'd never, never done a capital call and, and uh, we've only done a handful. But um, it, that this was the Southridge apartment. So this is 2015. We purchased it, 372 units. If I recall correctly, we're right in the mid 30s. Uh, for door um, raised right around five million or so for that, and, and we raised just for context there. We from the very first property we were buying, you know, houses and duplexes in 2005. We were raising capital, or excuse me, 2006 and 2007, 
um, we were raising capital for those. So, so raising capital has always been our platform. Syndicating has always been our platform. So this was actually kind of a smaller raise uh, for us. Um, and for the first couple of years, you know, it went, went fine. We did a repositioning, kind of a light value add. Um, and then in 2018, we had a fire on a property or a fire on one of the buildings. It was someone had left a cigarette out. And uh, fortunately, no one was hurt, but all 24 units in the building, you know, it was a combination of the fire, which wasn't too bad, but it was mainly smoke damage. And then the, the sprinkler and, and uh, the water throughout as well, that the whole building was deemed uh, uninhabitable. And wow. so what ensued after that was, uh, I can only describe it as a, as an 18 to 24 month absolute debacle with the insurance company. Um, it, it was, we got into lawsuits and it was a, just a long drawn out process uh, of trying to get this building back online. Um, and we had things we learned through that process where, you know, we could, could keep better records. Um, but long story short, of course, we, you know, ended up uh, turning that around and, you know, uh, renovating the building and we also, during that period, um, had in 2018-2019, uh, rolled out a technology piece that was not successful. So that's uh, we got to own, you know, the mistakes we made on that. Um, and that so we contributed ourselves about 650,000 as the deal was, you know, uh, losing money, and we needed to contribute to it. And then we did our first ever capital and uh, capital call. And, let me tell you, just absolutely excruciating. That's something we, we were hoping we would never have to do. Um, it it and, is a shock to the system, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, over the years, we also had a few uh, management team changes. So that's one of those where, you know, real estate is forgiving. You can put a team in place and think you've got the right team, and, you know, the results just aren't there, so you have to make some changes. Um but in the end, you know, we, we recovered from that. We, um, you know, leased the property back up because um, what we had is we not only had the property or the fire uh, building that was, of course, uh, you know, pulling money. We weren't uh, generating any income from that. We couldn't distribute. Uh, we, we distribute regularly, and we couldn't distribute to our investors during that time period. Uh, but then we also had some occupancy struggles, and so we got the right management team in place uh, got the building, um, you know, back in line, uh, and turned it around, uh, ended up selling in 2021. I think the end, end return on that was 38, 39%. I mean, so again, it's those catch all, those, those three big catch alls in my opinion, which is buying right. So we bought right. We had patience in selling. So we sold at a time when the market was hot and then just being obsessed with solving the business plan one way or another, which we did. It, it didn't happen as quickly as we wanted, and it was very tough. There were some, you know, a lot of tough investor calls. We do regular investor calls. We were fielding questions all throughout that time, um, and of course, did our first capital call on on uh, that property. One of I think we've only done two or three, um, and so anyway, it was a, a very very great learning experience and a lot of frustration, but I think it, it's just a good example um, of, of, like you said, how real estate is, is definitely very forgiving. Again, if you have those three big catch-alls right. Yeah, there's, it's like you, there's a almost an opposite rule of what you're saying. If you overpay for the property, you can't recover. You've got to buy the property exactly. right. And I see so many people you know, we're bidding on a commercial property and then all of a sudden this insanely high bid comes in and you just know that that person doesn't know what they're doing and they are going to get burned and that thing's going to be up for sale again in four or five years yeah. or foreclosed on. So you've got yeah. to buy the property right, no doubt. Well, talk talk to us a little bit about, or me, this is kind of my question. Did you end up in with a third party um public adjuster and then you had to get an attorney to get that insurance money for the fire um we you know i can't remember all of the details i believe so um we got it got you know we had legal with the the uh insurance company we had legal stuff going on with in a black 
64 layers deep. And so and we've got a great team, so that's a good good segue into our team. So we, we could not do what we do, my brother Joel and I, uh, without without a phenomenal team. And so there are there are once we get into the weeds, we've also got in house counsel now today. Once we get into the weeds, there are things where we have to entrust uh, some of those second, third, and fourth layers to the team. So yeah, I can't recall uh, uh, if uh, we had like specifically a public adjuster get involved, um, but it was yeah two years of very long and drawn out. Wow. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Yeah, I've been fortunate in my apartment when I had a fire, you know, burnt down just a couple units, and I had my check within weeks, you know, and it was way more than what I needed. So it was really a, uh, a good experience for me. But I hear a lot of people, you know, have bad experiences. And we had an insurance gentleman on Tuesday, and he was talking about the process. Get that third party uh, adjuster involved, then an attorney, and just go for exactly what it's, you know, what you're due. So, okay, so a 30, even with all those catastrophes, you still ended up with a 38% rate of return? Correct, yeah. Yeah, that is phenomenal. I, uh, okay, all right. Jesse, I sure appreciate you coming on the show today. I truly appreciate it. That was a wonderful case study and wonderful talking to you. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. All right, Jesse, you take care. Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, and if you want to get in touch with or you're thinking about investing with Jesse, he is one of our sponsors at Total Wealth Academy. At Total Wealth Academy, we have 40 different sponsors to choose from, but I can tell you right now, Jesse does have the highest rate of return of any of them. He is new with us, but he's got, you know, 15-year track record. He's just incredible. If you're interested, uh, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com, TotalWealthAcademy.com, and click on the free sample class there. And you can learn about how our system works, what we're doing, and it also helps you get off of procrastination. You know, if you like what you heard and you like Jesse, which I can tell you I'm going to invest some money with him, uh, go to TotalWealthAcademy.com and click on that free sample class and start the process. Start the process. So again, Jesse, thank you for coming on the show. Truly appreciate it. All right. What I'd like to do now is go over a couple of emails that came in. They were not related to... Oh, they were not related to our discussion with Jesse, but it's the same... It's the same basic questions. Um, this gentleman, I'm going to leave anonymous because he didn't sign it, has equity in his, equity in his home, a couple hundred grand in gold, a couple hundred grand in an IRA, small amount in a 401, and he's asking which he should use first. You know, to be honest with you, I'm not a proponent of anything that doesn't cash flow. So when I look at gold, that would be the first place that I would look at moving money. I would get that money, that gold sold, and get it into something that produces cash flow. You know, you have a choice out there. You can buy non-income producing assets, or you can buy income producing assets. I do not know why anybody chooses non-income producing assets. So, and your rate of return, as we just saw with Jesse, somewhere between 38% and 58% is going to destroy the rates of return that you're getting on your gold now. So, the answer to your question, Anonymous, I would use the gold first, the IRA second, and then possibly look at using some of that huge equity you have in your home. All right, we'll talk more after the break here on the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Thanks for listening. If you have money in an IRA, 401k, or other retirement account, 
you can use it to invest passively in real estate without tax or penalty. Our average rate of return is three times that of the stock market and mutual funds with much less volatility. If you have over $70,000, you can start passive investing today. Please attend our free sample class to learn more. Go to TotalWealthAcademy.com. That's TotalWealthAcademy.com for reservations. Welcome back to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. I am your host, Steve Davis, and we are getting, I'm getting quite a few emails. Some of these are too long to answer um, during the radio show, so I will email you after the show. Um, one of you I need to make a phone call. One of you I'm going to have to talk to. There's just so much information here. Uh, but my email is open to anybody who has a question about building wealth for themselves and their families with real estate. And it is steve at totalwealthacademy.com. Steve at totalwealthacademy.com. And the phone lines are also open. We are in the final segment of today's show. So if you've got a question for me, you really need to call almost immediately to make sure that you get through and, and that you give me enough time to answer the question. It's 281 558 5738 281 558 KSEV. Now, um, I'm leaving this one email anonymous, and it, it's kind of a politically motivated email. Um, very pro one side and very negative to the other side. But there's a couple of comments in here that are just, how do I put this? When it comes to politics, most of you are wasting, wasting your time. You're wasting your time. You know, yes, I agree with voting. But most of you, it took you five minutes or less to figure out who you were going to vote for. Yet you spend hours and hours and hours discussing it, complaining, moaning, bitching about it. It's like, get what? How is that productive at all? It's not. It is a waste of your flipping time. You listen to hours and hours of radio on politics. You listen to watch hours and hours of TV on politics. Put the politics away and read a book on how to make more money because that's your problem. It isn't who's in charge. I'll tell you, I made money under Bush. I made money under Clinton. I made money under Bush Jr. I made money under Obama. I made money under Trump. I made money under Biden. Don't run around thinking that some politician is going to change your financial position. They're not going to. They don't have that ability. People, you are 100% responsible for everything in your life. If you want to be a winner, you've got to take this attitude. You can't blame the government. You can't blame the Democrats. You can't blame the Republicans. You, they're impotent. They can't even figure out whose bathroom is whose it's they're impotent they're not going to change your life they can't do it if you want to change your life you've got to do it you're 100 percent responsible for everything in your life good or bad this is how ext extreme i take this particular point if i'm driving to work and I stop at a red light, and someone rear ends me, just hits me while I'm parked at the red light. I'm going to get out of the car and go, man, I should have left for work 30 minutes earlier. That wreck was my fault. Somebody rear ended me, that's my fault. See, what most people do is they waste their time blaming. 
It's, oh, my parents didn't love me enough. My high school teachers didn't like me. This person didn't like me. This person broke my heart. This person, and it's all blaming, 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 blaming. You got to get out of that. This email is literally blaming the government for your financial position. (laughs) They're not doing that. You're doing that. Let me guess. The only source of income you have is a job, which means you're not doing anything with your life. You're just doing enough to get by and complaining, moaning, whining. Now, as harsh as all that was, you've got to understand that it's just the facts. I mean, just think about it deeply. Has a president ever Put money in your pocket. You say, well, during COVID they did. I'm not going to count that. When any other time did a president put a substantial amount of money in your pocket, substantial enough that it changed your life? Never. And then these comments about, oh, the market, the economy, blah, 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 blah. That's all BS. It's all BS. The economy is fine. Economy's always been fine. And it always will be fine. Have you ever heard this on the news? Tell me the truth. Anybody can email me if they've ever heard this. The news announcer says this. Everything is fantastic. Economy is rocking. Our president is a bad, is, I should say something I'm not allowed to say on the radio. Our president is doing a great job. The economy's booming. Everything's great. Have you ever heard that news report? Never. And you never will. Those of you that watch the news, you have a skewed point of view. You're screwed because you watch the news. Why? Because they only talk about the negative. They will not talk about the positive. Because the positive does not sell advertising. Only the negative does. So if you watch the news, what you're watching is the negative side of everything. And you then tend to believe it. You think everything's negative. But I am 60 years old. I turned 60 in December. The economy's never been good. The economy's never been great, according to the news. But people are still getting rich. People are still making money. But according to the news, it's always bad news. See, they know that human beings love a if it bleeds, it leads. The news always puts the blood on the news. They don't tell you the good news. They tell you the bad news. So if you watch the news, all you're hearing is the bad news. The news is the worst place to get your financial information from. It's the worst place to get your economic comments on the economy from. You should be on the internet looking at credible sources that are not news related that just flat out tell you the facts. But the problem is most of you are so uneducated financially, you don't know what to look for. So I'll tell you this. You go out, if you're in Houston, you go out I-10 to 99 and go south into a thing called Cinco Ranch. 20 years ago, those were, you know, million dollar cow pastures. Now they're billion dollar subdivisions. Things are growing and they're growing, they're tending to grow exponentially. 
And of course, I don't have time to go into this, but you got to make your own economy. Stop worrying what, what the politicians are doing and hiding behind that. Oh, I'm not successful because the wrong person got elected. B.S. You're full of it. Take responsibility. You are responsible for your financial position. Not the government, not your boss, not your parents, not your wife, not your husband. You. Create your own economy by buying income-producing assets that make money in both the up and down markets. Because yes, I admit there are up and down markets. But it's still a good market if you know what you're doing. I mean, think about it. I'm praying for a crash. I want the economy to crash again because I'll make massive amounts of money. And so will you if you know what you're doing. And then when the market returns and comes up, I'll make massive amounts of money, just like you will if you know what you're doing. Okay, we are at the end of the show. I want to thank everybody for listening. Have a great rest of your day. You've been listening to the Total Wealth Academy radio show. Please remember that this show is for entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as legal, tax, or investing advice. Always get a professional opinion before making any investment decisions. To find out more about coaching and consulting at Total Wealth Academy, visit TotalWealthAcademy.com and attend one of our free sample classes on real estate investing. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Where conservatives find their voice. AM 700 KSEV. Tom Ball Houston. The voice of Texas. September represented the third straight monthly increase. Online retailers, restaurants, and grocery stores all reported higher sales. Correspondent Jeremy House. Low unemployment, steady pay gains, and rising stock and home values help sustain shoppers' willingness to spend despite higher prices. Also at townhall.com, former White House Homeland Security Advisor Francis Townsend says the Secret Service should bring in new leadership. The idea here is to have fresh thinking, both about tactics and techniques, but also culture, because we believe that culture is a matter of leadership. Um, And so they need a fresh start across the board, not just culture, but also tactics, technically, etc. An independent panel investigating the attempted assassination of Donald Trump at a Pennsylvania campaign rally says the Secret Service needs fundamental reform and that another butler can and will happen again without major changes. That review faulted the Secret Service for poor communications that day and failing to secure the building where the gunman took his shots. More at townhall.com. Americans now have more credit card debt than any time in history, owing a staggering $1.3 trillion collectively. What happens when most people can't pay their bills? Well, the U.S. economy is clearly moving into uncertain territory. That's why more Christians are turning to gold just for their peace of mind. I'm Lance Wallnow, Christian news analyst with a 30-year track record of predicting trends. The Bible tells us that gold is a time-tested store of value that can protect your God-given assets through almost anything including America's historic debt bubble. And here's the good news. You can own gold through your 401k or IRA. My friends at Birch Gold Group can help you buy gold for your retirement account, tax-free and penalty-free. To learn more, text the word FAITH to 989898 for an info kit from Birch Gold that's entirely free, zero cost or obligation. Text that next step right now and take it. Text FAITH to the number 989898 for your free info kit That's faith to 989898. Three people have died, four seriously injured after a Mississippi bridge collapsed while it was being prepped for demolition. Governor Tate Reeves says state officials are on the scene of that tragedy on the Strong River. State transportation officials say the bridge on State Route 149 in Simpson County had been closed to traffic since September 18th. Five new long-haul flights being added to Ronald Reagan National Airport. The Transportation Department has tentatively awarded one daily round-trip flight apiece to Alaska Airlines, American, Delta, Southwest, and United at Reagan National. 
Federal rules limit the number of flights longer than 1,250 miles from the airport. But this year, Congress approved five new daily flights at the airport, which is closer to downtown D.C. than Dulles Airport. Greg Clugston, Washington. Breaking news and analysis at townhall.com. The Chris X Radio Pizza Party is brought to you by the Texas Dive Center, located on Dixie Farm Road near Ellington Field. For more information, call 281-741-9949 or online at txdivecenter.com. From the KSCV Weather Center, for this afternoon, a beautiful day with lots of sunshine, a nice breeze out of the east, the high of 77. Clear and comfy tonight with a low down to 55. A gorgeous day to round out the week on Friday. Mostly sunny and nice, the high of 81. Partly sunny Saturday, the high of 83. And another beautiful day for Sunday. Sunny skies, the high of 84. With the KSCV Weather Center forecast, I'm meteorologist Jason Katarina. At True Lux, stone crab season is finally upon us. From the turquoise waters of the Florida Keys, we catch them, pack them on ice, and jet fresh deliver them. From our traps to your table in less than 24 hours. Also returning is True Lux famed Power Lunch. Need a spot for a quick lunch meeting? Come and join us at True Lux for an amazing Power Lunch. Check us out at truelux.com or give us a call at 713-783-7270. We will be honored to have you in. Your table is waiting. The open enrollment period for medical plans is right around the corner, so get some facts and your options. In response to COVID-19, rates are expected to rise as high as 40% in some states. Are you already paying exorbitant Obamacare or COBRA rates? Are you paying ridiculous rates for your family on your work group plan? Are you going without insurance because you can't find anything reasonable? Your search is over. Listen to your pal Chris Salcedo. How does a zero deductible, no copay nationwide PPO plan sound? And you can get it at half the cost. Keeping your hard-earned money where it belongs, in your pocket. American Medical Plans will tailor a plan that best fits you as well.